It is always an honor to speak with Dr. M. Zudi Jasser, founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Good morning, Dr. Jasser. Oh, good morning. It's always great to be with you. Thank you. What did you do to get CARE mad at you? I see there's a headline here. CARE trying to have anti-Islamist Muslim kicked off religious freedom panel, and you're the anti-Islamist Muslim. Boy, I tell you, what a bizarre world we live in when uh, CARE sees you as an enemy. Oh, exactly. They uh, Basically, they, they typify, exemplify the, the typical Islamist bullies who think that they have a monopoly on representing Muslims. And if you have a Muslim who begins getting traction, uh, uh, gaining acceptance of the idea that Islamists aren't the only representatives of Muslims and exposes that CARE's agenda is not really about civil rights, but really about uh, silencing opposition. And, and uh, it's very interesting that they're recently just sort of making things up. I was on Fox News uh, talking about the recent uh, changes in requirements uh, that easing the ability for people to wear beards, and I said it's a good thing for the Sikh community because Sikhs weren't able to serve, and I said uh, uh, that we have to be careful, though, that the regulation loosening uh, did not give protections from for COs to allow them protections from some of the litigation jihad that some of these pseudo-civil rights groups would do. And I said, you know, I actually don't believe that Muslims sh- or even Orthodox Jews should be allowed to wear beards in the military because it's really not central to our faith, and you can't open the door to losing unit cohesion, and it has to be difficult to make these changes. The military is not like working at Walmart. And, oh, they just uh, uh, took the mantle of the, the Salafi Muslims who think that beards are, are mandatory and said that I'm trying to prevent rights for Muslims and liberty in, in the military, and uh, just went on from there and it's just they make things up whole cloth and they don't care about the truth and or even having respectful disagreement but rather simply saying that nobody else can have another opinion in the muslim community if they do then they must be islamophobic and anti-muslim and that's really what they're doing is they're trying to put the fear into people that help us into donors into media that would use us and they do it under the guise of being a so-called civil rights group and if you look at our twitter feed their organization's leaders are calling me a monkey. They called me Uncle Tom and, and just make up things in a very vicious, uh, nasty way. Well, it is not uncommon in today's world that if you want to disagree with someone, it's not enough. You demonize the person. Call a person all kinds of names uh, and set the person apart from uh, what's called, you know, this normal standard. All of a sudden, you who fights for, for the rights of for the rights of, of, of those who want to be free, you're labeled anti-Islamic. Uh, Talk about CARE for a minute. Wait a minute. CARE was an unindicted co-conspirator in the Holy Land, right, uh, foundation case? Yeah, absolutely. We tweeted an image uh, a week ago of a check of $5,000 they received from the Holy Land Foundation. So they were very tightly connected to this organization. It is an organization that all of its board members went to jail because they were funneling American donations to Hamas, which was is a or- terrorist organization uh, illegally. And uh, they were unindicted co-conspirator because they uh, had significant information and uh, uh, facilitated a lot of that activity. And to this day, they defend uh, those board members. And they attacked me. They, they sent two letters to the commission I sit on saying that somehow I should not be representing ideas of liberty because of our donors, who are all patriotic American organizations. Meanwhile, they sent a letter to Muammar Gaddafi in 2009 in Arabic that was translated as saying that he is the preeminent leader of the Muslim community globally, and they hope that he will donate $15 million to their project. They attacked me for being on certain media, such as Fox News, which many conservatives believe is mainstream, and while their biggest media presence is on press TV, which is Iranian TV, uh, it, there's been studies that showed that of their last uh, 50 appearances in the past three years, over half of them were on Iranian television. So here's an organization that appears on the enemy television of American uh, 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 population, and they portray me as the enemy mm-hmm. instead of actually Iran and these countries. And actually, I think that's the most important part about this is they want me removed from a commission that actually doesn't deal with their issues domestically. It deals with issues globally. We don't have a portfolio domestically. So it should make Americans wonder 
why they want me removed from a commission that deals with Iran and Saudi Arabia and Syria and other countries where the major target of most of the uh, egregious human rights violations of these countries are other Muslims, but CARE wants me silenced because of my inability, according to them, to represent Muslim liberty, which is really what they're a part of, is the OIC mafia. Yeah, Muammar Gaddafi is a hero, and Zudi Jasser is a villain. That's what they're right. Right, that's what the prophet said years ago, woe to those who call day, night, and night, day, complete reversal uh, of decent values. Amazing how you can get away with it. Uh, if you say it long enough, there are those who buy into it. And the other amazing thing is if you Google their letters the past three weeks, they've had three different communications put on PR or Newswire. On, they've spent thousands of dollars on spreading these defamation in the past month. It's not getting picked up by anyone. I mean, the bottom line is, is that it's interesting that their base on the far left and these uh, um, from the ACLU to the NAACP and all these other organizations that deal in identity politics, Nobody's picking this up. They realize that it's just a joke. But yet, you know, this is the sad part, is that they, every, everybody's turning a blind eye to how CARE bullies and intimidates organizations with 1% of their budget. And meanwhile, nobody wants to cover it and show that these people operate in a very antagonistic, I, I would say corrupt way, and uh, they just sort of ignore it. We're speaking to Dr. M. Zudi Jasser, founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Good morning, Dr. Jasser. This is Alan Abramson. How are you? Nice to speak to you again. Thank you, Alan. It's, uh, it's great to speak to you. You know, you mentioned uh, the, the kind of treatment that you're receiving from, from CARE as defamatory. Have you considered uh, suing them, filing a lawsuit? Let's uh, get some depositions rolling. Let's get some discovery rolling. Let's find out who these people really are. I think that's a very uh, valid consideration. Because do you know a lawyer who will represent him? Or <laughs> do I know anybody who will represent him? Or? Uh, I mean, these things always end up costing uh, quite a bit, and uh, I think that uh, that would send them a lesson is, is for us to go on the offense. That's what they do for a living is to sue people for no reason and intimidate good Americans into silence. Why not take them on? Because what they're doing is attacking our branding, and our branding is that we are Muslims, devout, orthodox, who really believe there should be a diverse opinion in our community, and they've labeled me and their report from October. They spent quite a bit to disseminate this. It's called the Islamophobia Report and identified me as one of the 12 most threatening individuals to Islam in America and my kids, my, my community. You know, look at that and say, what the heck is this coming from? And there basically is defamation. Now, to prove damages and other things, we've looked at this. Uh, I think they should be concerned about it. But uh, um, to sue somebody is one thing, but to be able to win that, as since I am a public figure, is, is another. But we definitely think that it's worth putting fear in their hearts about when they take on honest Muslims, what's going to happen. Well, the problem is, you know, today with, with all the access to various kinds of media, you put something out, it then gets picked up all around the world, it gets read all around the world. You don't need a lot of money to destroy someone's reputation. And it seems to me that that's what they're trying to do here. Yep. The only media this got picked up on, and it's significant, Indonesia's main newspaper covered it, uh, American Muslim on, on U.S. Commission, uh, Islamophobe, um, Turkish media, World Bulletin ran it uh, uh, two days ago on their uh, media, which is uh, one of the main Turkish media, which is the AKP, the Islamist media. So it's only running on their friends, the Islamists, but it's reaching tens, hundreds of millions globally. You know, it's interesting. I asked you some time ago, where's everybody else with you? And I find, in talking to a number of people, both Jewish uh, and Muslim and Christian, that your following is increasing. Uh, I think of when you began some years ago. I remember meeting with you, talking to you. And I look at where you are today. The fact that you're being attacked by care, I see as a good thing. It shows that you are a threat to them. And they need a threat to them because for too long they've been getting away with the same kind of rhetoric, um, able to portray Anyone who disagrees as being, you know, an Islamophobe, and you, you know all the... We, we, look, so we've seen it in other places where you can easily label someone as racist, anti-Semitic. Once you do that, you put the person on the defensive. It's, it's an old strategy. Uh, but to see someone like yourself who has not only served your community... You served America. You were in the military, uh, the American military. Um, you're out there 
saying what needs to be said, uh, but I do find more people are saying it with you. Is that Am I being accurate in my depiction? Oh, very accurate. And this is all over the Facebook, our Facebook postings from Muslims that have posted their press release and saying that this shows that uh, our brother, uh, Zudi Jasser, is having effect in our community. And uh, um, this afternoon I'm going to be on a radio program with Tariq Fatah, who's a Muslim, one of the most prominent Muslims up in Canada, who's in our coalition and um, in Europe, where we have many Muslims that have seen this and said, boy, this really means that... Uh, you know, uh, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and their coalition must be effective because CARE is, is going out of its way on its homepage and elsewhere to, to put my picture up and uh, mock it and defame it and write things that are false because uh, they're afraid. These guys are deathly afraid that they're going to lose the connection that they have with the mosques in America where they, have, they can put out a press release and it gets run. This one did not run in, in hardly any mosques, uh, while the one that they ran against me two years ago when I was appointed to the commission ran in 70 mosques, which still was a small number compared to the 3,000 in America. But yet, uh, they're not getting the same traction because many Muslims are looking at this saying, you know, this is just weird. You guys have other more important things, and uh, you're very hypocritical when you take on somebody who has the reputation of Dr. Jasser while you're silent about Iran and Syria and, and, and uh, the Brotherhood in Egypt and other organizations globally that are just uh, so egregiously different. Dr. Jasser, are they, do you think that they're using this as a fundraising tool for them? I, I think that's part of it, is that they have a core central Islamist leadership in America that that have a mission to evangelize their movements to protect brotherhood hamas other groups globally in that ideology and they see me as a threat so how what best way to raise money than this and this is the guy who cory sailor who sent the letter three days ago is now the head of their department to combat islamophobia that's who's spearheading <laughs> this and that department was formed in december which is really the only thing they really do anyway but now it's an official department it's something orwellian actually but you know, this guy thinks I'm the threat to Islamophobia, even mm. though, you know, we've talked many times here how, how no. central Islam is to my life. But, yeah, they're raising it's, – it's, it's a tool to, to, to get their core constituency, the Islamists uh, uh, who we're fighting, um, to give them money. And in the meantime, they've refused every public invitation we've given them to debate them. Um, constantly yeah. we're saying, let's have a debate. You know, bring your – whether it's Saylor or Ibrahim Hooper or Nihad Awad, uh, join us at the National Press Club for a, a two-hour debate about your mission versus uh, what the mission of Muslims in America should be. And they don't want to do that. They'd rather send out press releases right. that are fabricated. Yeah, I, I have yet to see a debate with you. Uh, and you wonder about someone who uh, is allegedly so strong in belief and afraid to sit down opposite you uh, and, and really discuss... Uh, the argument here, but yet has no problem, as you say, sending out all, oh, I get more press releases, CARE says this and CARE says that. It's quoted in various news outlets, uh, and yet you can't get a debate with any of them. Uh, what, uh, what does that say? <laughs> it, it says that they're afraid of you. Let, let's talk about something for a moment that's, you know, related uh, to our discussion. We talked, I talked earlier about um, Karzai. He is the president of Afghanistan who comes out with a statement after releasing uh, members of the Taliban, releasing them from prison, those who have blood on their hands, killed American soldiers, and he says to America, don't you interfere in our process. You, This is none of your business. Uh, I look at Mohammed Abbas, Palestinian Authority, negotiating with Israel, and yet uh, former terrorists released from Israeli prisons our heroes, suicide bombers, our martyrs, public squares, a name for them. I mean, you wonder at the end of the day, how how does one, how do you negotiate with these people? Well, the, until they have a reform, until moderate Muslims uh, uh, that believe in honesty and, and in, in integrity and intellectual consistency begin to openly take the, and they're trying to, and this is why I was so much against us pulling out of there completely, because there needs to be chaperoning or the next generation will just disappear. And you're seeing 
uh, Iraq now being turned over to mm-hmm. Iranian uh, hegemony and Afghanistan we're, we're losing you know Karzai is typical of uh, uh, many of the tribal leaders there and that he will say what the people want to hear in a demagogic fashion and uh, to unite his community he will throw America throw Israel throw the Jews under the bus yeah. because this works for him because that's what plays uh, you know to the small towns and, and others that uh, he doesn't want to deal with the problems within Afghanistan, so he creates and uses a, a foreign foil to do that, even if that foil was a country that came and put him, uh, gave him the yeah. ability to, to be president and, and try to liberate them from the Taliban themselves. And All they're right. just not dealing with the pathologies they have there. Thank you so much. I, I always look forward to, to having you on the air uh, because you're, the insights you bring are just... Uh, they're very important. Dr. M. Zudi Jasser, founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, thank you so much.